I'm Jana Knapp, and I was a child of the 80s. Now, I am a strong and confident woman, but not always. This girl was quiet, terrified, and ridiculously awkward. So how do I go from being a shy and nerdy kid to a strong, confident woman? I had some really great role models that helped me along the way. Now, I first started looking for them in fairy tales, and the predominant female archetype in fairy tales is princesses, right? Yeah, well, they're beautiful, they get carried off by a prince, they fall madly in love, they live happily ever after. Yeah, it's a lie. <laughs> so, waiting around for your prince to come puts you out there as a sideline player in the game of life. And to top it off, girls are mean. We're not out there treating each other like princesses every day. So in order to survive the cannibalistic nature of junior high, I needed a different archetype. What I needed was someone strong, someone capable of surviving, someone who could still be feminine. What I found were women with swords and blasters and stakes. These are self-rescuing princesses. They're awesome. They fight bad guys, they survived high school, and the overarching themes in their stories teach us so much. First and foremost, there are bad guys. You may not always be able to spot them, but they're there. No matter what, there's always somebody willing to do the wrong thing. Now, because there are bad guys, somebody needs rescuing. And that means that our heroine is probably out to save the universe or an individual. But no matter what, she's required to save the day. And in order to do that, she's going to have to face some peril, usually the kind that can get you killed. Women with swords are vulnerable to being hurt, and not just physically. Sometimes it's about loneliness. Sometimes it's about being the only one who believes that you're right and are going out there and doing something about it. And sometimes these stories don't have happy endings. So how do we take these themes and apply them to our everyday life? Okay, well, whether it's between discovering who Darth Vader is or your micromanaging boss, we learn how to identify the bad guy. <laughs> Sometimes people really are out to get you. So if that's the case, what do you do? Take action. Be the one that solves the problem, either by sword or by spreadsheet. Be the one who solves it. But be sure you're fighting the right battle and what you're fighting is worth the potential risk. Because life is dangerous. Everything involves peril. Even if it's just the fact your friends are posting bad pictures of you on Facebook. <laughs> be sure that what you want is worth the risk. Because you may have to go it alone. By doing the things that scare you on your own. You develop self-reliance and independence. And those things define who you are. So that's a whole lot to internalize in your average 22-minute episode, right? But the important thing is, is that girls decide by the age of 12 what appropriate gender roles are for themselves. So if we want this, we have to catch them while it's young. And we can't leave out the boys. Exposing boys to dominant female archetypes while at an early age promotes and ingrains gender equality. But we have a problem. Women with swords are being replaced by shiny, happy people. <laughs> Heroic fantasy is giving way to situational comedy and relationship-based storylines where everybody has to get along. And that's a problem. We can't wrap our children away from trouble and danger. We do them a disservice. In real life, People's feelings get hurt. Not everybody gets a trophy, and not everything goes right. We need more women with swords and guns and frying pans. <laughs> they have the potential to help us unlock ourselves, whether we be six or 60, and they provide the impetus for us to evolve into confident human beings. I want you to spend time with these women. Fight the bad guys. Define who you are. You might just save yourself.
Thank you.